Take a story where uh, we talk about a boy who is smart, is talented, and very creative. Although he's unable to use his hands effectively, he has braced the odds and tops his class despite his disability. Mission Ghana brings to you the story of Jonah Mau, uh, who is uh, in dire need of support to undergo medical care and further his education. Portia Gabo has been looking deep into this mm -hmm. and his father's report. Today, mission is at Susuanho RC Primary and Kindergarten School in the Dryam Kwanta Municipality of the Ahafo region. We're here to meet a special boy who, despite his disability, has braved the odds to join his colleagues in class. Well, he needs a little support to become someone in future. Yes, I was born like this. Before um, I was sent to school, people, everybody who will see me just look at me. That time I don't come out to go with them or play with children, just like that. So I was at home every time doing artwork and modeling and money chains. When we first met Jonah, he was writing his end of term exams at the Susuanho RC Primary and Kindergarten School. He's unable to use his hands effectively, but slowly he strives to support himself over the years by using both hands, though slowly, to write. But he was almost denied his right to education. I didn't start school early because my father knew, knows that I can't even go to school <coughs> because of my conditions. People tell me if Jonah was their son, they wouldn't have been able to cater for him. When he was born, I felt ashamed to send him to school. A friend called me and encouraged me to give him education. He now tops his class. Yes, of here, or come. Thanks to inclusive education, Jonah has joined regular pupils in class who support him in everything he does. <laughs> By dint of hard work, Jonah is topping his class. And he's also good academic both, even all field. He cannot move all the uh, the hands and the legs. For right now, as we are talking, he cannot even walk a distance of um, 10 meters without sitting. We are trying to get means of helping him because the mentor, the mind is actually excellent. You could see that in the school, he's the best student. The mind is excellent, but the future, when you leave him alone to go or stay as a family member, what can he do for himself? The help he is needing, first one is like we need experts outside to help him. Our environment that we are, we don't know what else to do. So we need experts to come to his aid. The assembly uh, has such a system in place. And uh, we do help the disabled people in the uh, municipality. Uh, not long ago, we, we, we distributed items to the disabled children especially Jonas is one of those that we distributed uh, the items to due to his disability Jonas family had to relocate from the north to dry and quanta in the Afro region to seek medical care for him 
Jonah's father is a farmer and not financially stable to support his son, but he's benefited from the 3% District Assembly Common Fund for persons with disability for his son. He got three sheep and hopes to sell them to support his son's education. Jonah is also very creative. He currently needs support to undergo treatment as well as to further his education. Someone could help me to undergo the surgery. I will be happy because of my because of the distance between our house and this school. It, it seems to be too far. So if they can help me to undergo my surgery so that I will be well and can do that, I will be happy. He struggles to walk when going to school. Even the crutches he uses were donated. Jonah had a message for parents of children with disability. I want to tell them to never give up about this. They, they have to look after them. Uh, they have to look for, uh, take care of them and do what they like. One day I hope God will bless them and give them uh, something that they like or anything they are praying for. Poshigabo, TV3 News, Suswahu, Ahafo Region. Welcome back and let's say thank you to Stargana Foundation, to the UK, to DFID and to the European Union for making Mission Ghana possible. The story you saw uh, will be a precursor to a conversation we'll have, but we'll talk extensively about uh, affirmative action with regards to women in Ghana. What the, uh, what the issues have been from back in the day, we'll take a historic perspective and then we'll zoom into what needs to be done knowing full well that on the 22nd of February 2017 the President of the Republic Nanado Dankwe Kufuado mentioned in the State of the Nation address that the promulgation of an affirmative action law will be one of his key priorities. Fast forward to 2019 July what do we have? Let's have a conversation with Gloria Kankam, who's with Abantu for Development and lawyer. Gloria Ofore Buedu is with the uh, Ghana Institute of um, Management and Public Administration. Ladies, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? I'd like to take your initial thoughts about the, the story we saw, taking a historical perspective to how affirmative action has been used in the past. Madam? Well, affirmative action is um, used to correct certain imbalances. For example, the elderly may not have some opportunities, so it's used to correct that. Or the youth mm -hmm. may not have some equal opportunities. Or persons with disability, as we saw in the um, clip. Or gender. They shall, they, you know, we will have issues where there's some form of lack of equal opportunities between the two genders. So that is how affirmative action has been used. Or even for ethnic minorities, okay. because in the history of this country, we had more educational resources in the South than mm -hmm. in the North. Mm -hmm. So for decades, the Northern schools have enjoyed free education vis-a-vis -vis the South until recently when the MPP government came up with a free education policy for mm. secondary schools. So it could be for persons with disability, ethnic minorities, gender, men vis-a-vis -vis women, the aged, and most importantly, the youth, because the youth constitute a higher percentage of our country. Right. Uh, Gloria, let me pick your initial thoughts as well about how affirmative action is being used, and then we'll get into what really affirmative action is in our situation in Ghana. Okay, like lawyer said, affirmative action is used to correct some imbalances or inequalities that had existed previously. For instance, in Ghana, if we take if the universities, like the medical University of Ghana Medical School, mm. there was a quota system that brought in more ladies. And even in the other um, faculties, right. there were um, quota system for girls, where girls are taken from 14 and boys maybe 12. 
and that kind of thing, and it right. worked out. Mm. But if the issue of um, persons with disability, as we saw in this video clip, also comes in sometime. How do you correct such people? Because mm. they are not in the majority. Okay. They are in minority. And we can take some of the UN conventions where governments or state um, members of the UN have to put in temporary special measures to correct some of these things, like the, oh, we are going to talk about affirmative action. Mm. Council, over the last seven to eight years, uh, women groups and women rights groups and civil society organizations have been pushing for a great movement to get the uh, affirmative action bill passed. What is our particular case and why do we need that law? Our particular case is that in the public sector, we do not have enough women. Usually in parliament, we have about 10% representation being women. Mm. In local governments, in um, some periods, we had 3% representation. Then it's increased after a lot of advocacy okay. to 7%. Mm. And then as at the last election, it reduced to about 3%. And we believe that for a nation to develop, Mm. We need full capacity development, engagement, and participation of everybody, irrespective of your So, so you agree with the president when he had that panel conversation that generated a lot of controversy that women need to have capacity to be able to fill in the spaces that are left? It's, it's not just women, the whole nation. Mm. So it's pathetic if a nation is operating under capacity because mm. we are looking at economic right. development. Right. We can't have... 97% men in local governments mm -hmm. and then 3% women in local government. Because at the end of the day, what is local government? Mm. Local government, according to our constitution, is for the communities. And then under the communities, local government representation must ensure that income and resources mm. are generated for development of the community. Mm. In Ghana, our local governments internally generated funds predominantly are from the markets. Okay. And with mm -hmm. that peculiar social, cultural history and practicalities, mm. the market is dominated by women. Okay. That's True. why we call, we have a terminology market women, True. market women. True. You don't have market men. So if we are not adding women representation, improving it at the local government level, then we are talking of operating far below capacity hmm. to our detriment and to the poverty of everybody. M Ms. Kankam, so Abantu has uh, a project on, uh, on uh, affirmative action. Does it, for example, in the case Council talks about, include the market women to be empowered enough to want to aspire to become assemblymen, MPs, and take charge of their development locally? Absolutely. In fact, Abantu deals a lot with market women, Mokola, Demonstration, Odona, and all that. But mm. what, uh, coming to our topic, you know, the affirmative action is supposed to deal with social, economic, and cultural, political issues mm. of the society, mm. which includes both men and women. Okay. And we cannot underestimate the role of women in local government, okay. and particularly to economic empowerment and then economic contribution of women, contributions of women. Abantu's project is of network CSOs and then with funding from also coalitions like the Women's Manifesto Coalition and then the Domestic Violence Coalition. Mm. All are members of this project that funded by AWDF, that's the African Women's mm. Development Fund, to complement efforts already started. And if you look at the history, we started in two, 1998. Mm -hmm. And then Ghana ratified the the um, CEDO. CEDO is Convention on All Forms of Violence, all, all Forms of Discrimination Against Women, mm -hmm. a UN convention. Ghana ratified that in 1995. And mm -hmm. then in 1998, we started the process for affirmative action, right. which is a demand from Article 4 and 7 mm -hmm. of CEDO. So Ghana, we did not deviate. But then pushing it forward had not been so easy. Mm -hmm. We go back what, what and have been forth. the hurdles? I think we need political will. Where we stand now, we just need a political will and the, the president said in February 2017 that is one of his priorities. And in 2018, February 14, he promised 40 women of Ghana right. in our presence that he's going to pass before the end of 2018. So he sees the importance of it. But the status of it now, we just need a political will. The political will will come from, say, 
The Attorney General putting together a bill exactly. sponsored by your good selves. It goes to cabinet, it comes to parliament, they, they read, they first, second, third, and then they push it back to cabinet for, uh, you know, final finality, and then the president assents to it, becomes law. Where are we now in that process? At the moment, it's still with the AG's department. But then, at, at, at Madame. has not left the Attorney General's table? Um, I would say that um, Abantu for development has done a lot with the communist manifesto. Hey, please, my apologies. <laughs> I'm not a communist. With the women manifesto, which commenced in 2004. And Abantu has done a lot of affirmative action processes in local Where governments. Where are we now in the I'm, process? I'm, I'm making, we we I'm don't have a lot up. of time, forgive me. Then Abantu also revised a second edition of the communist manifesto. Hey, I'm so involved with socialism and liberalism. I understand. The the Electra is Electra. <laughs> yes, the Women's Manifesto. The second edition was launched. And then under Women in Politics and Decision Making, Abantu spoke about local government. Okay. Now we are going to have a local government referendum mm. on, among others, election of DCs right. and other members mm. of the mm. local government. You know. So we are looking at a position where about 50% mm. of the um, elected persons could be female Who, who's going to push them there well it's the political will is the ministry of local government it's cso's like abantu the affirmative action stakeholders and coalition and also are the women willing to contest but well it all depends on and also the media because mm. you have to do a lot of education we are tired of this country always operating under capacity we have an informal sector of the economy which is over 88 percent as at the last you know um what do you call it population census and we have just a small formal economy mm. 12 to 15 percent which can be measured when we even look at our tax mm. it's only a small percentage paying tax when it comes to pensions only 14 per percent of the population who are on retirement mm. have access to pensions and only four percent even earn a pension of a thousand Ghana cities and above. We are operating so much so, under so capacity. You, being, so being... under local government, mm. this is the chance. The referendum is coming on. This is the time to look at a system where women can have a 50% representation mm. when it comes to DCs, MCs, when it comes to the assembly members, those who are elected. And then we quickly But, have, but the women must put themselves forward in first, fact, mustn't they? If, if we are looking at the common good, then it's in our own interest that we support the women to stand and even come up with some form of modalities for 50% of all participation to be women. So you, Otherwise, you, you, we'll continue to sit there and that will continue you, you, to operate Madam, you capacity. enumerated some activities that are bound to well, us down. The, the, the uh, activities really are law. local government. So, so, can you so, tell? Yeah. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking at, we're talking about affirmative action, mm -hmm. a component which will be uh, empowerment for I, local I government. I don't office. want to. Now, I'm, I'm asking mm -hmm. the question that of all the efforts that you have put together, mm -hmm. where are we now in trying to get the law promulgated Okay, where are we us? are mm -hmm. now is that we've had the 2015 law where we had an affirmative action bill sorry mm. a bill mm. it's not a law yet right, yeah. it's being passed where we had an affirmative action bill where a gender equality board was supposed to be established under the ministry of gender then we had the 2016 bill which was revised then we had the 2017 mm. then we had now have a 2018 and i guess even a 2019 so if we look at that area it's not it's not been too good mm. it's like it travels to cabinet to parliament right, as you said right. it comes back there's always something about it but we are saying that fine the bill is still going through a six or seven mm. version for all i can remember but right now we have something on the ground local government okay right? so why don't we let, take let me, advantage let me, let me, of that okay let we me bring <laughs> gloria in so, so gloria let's look at best practices around the world and african examples mm -hmm. of countries that have done this giving the women power shown them the light and they have taken the center stage a typical example is just south africa okay. which now had 50 50 50 cabinet mm -hmm. so then they started with this affirmative action calling it like and madame said gender mm -hmm. equal bill mm -hmm. bringing in more women so for instance we are going in for the referendum and then the um, district assembly level election we need to push this law must be passed before this cap, um, parliament right mm -hmm. otherwise then we will not get any specific document we'll just be dealing with the constitution as i said exactly. but the demand of the constitution article 17 for will not have it mm -hmm. but if we have it then because there are women who are willing to go 
but they need someone to push them. Right. I mean, and we need that law. And, and the political parties don't push the women to go? Political parties don't. I have always said that political parties are even to be blamed. Because, for instance, why do you put in women's organizer? Mm. And the role of the women's organizer ends up as domestic. Okay. Not on the decision making team. So, working to the, the organizer. You the know, organizer. so we should kick that thing off and leave everybody to contest. Okay. And then the political parties can then operate with the quota system where we need maybe 40 percent on the executive mm -hmm. the national executive and then it trickles down okay otherwise but, but says then, 50 you are talking 40. no no i'm not, talking, the, the, I'm not talking in a vacuum i'm talking about the african <laughs> chapter exactly. the Chimper. un yeah. it has to be Chimper. the un threshold is 30 but the au is calling for 50 50 right. by I, I, 20, I support 65. Them in 50 50 call. You know. Let, let's wrap up madam on this so where do we go from here because each time the bill goes from parliament to cabinet and back to parliament and they rise work down is zero you start the process again. all over again and people where, are where do we tired. go from here the duty bearers I, are watching I, what do you tell I them i think i think um governments should not see the women issue as um, a favor if, if, a favor and um, favoring anybody mm. i remember paul Gan kagami said something yeah. about women issues being a development issue mm. we should see women's issues from the grassroots mm. right to the national level as a development issue that's why the african union has come up with the issue of parity right. so if by god's grace the mpp manifesto is moving at electing dcs mmc mm. um, metropolitan municipal and district chief executives the unit committees the development count town development and um, councils and what have you why don't we make a specific provision mm. you know with the ministry the minister and all of us media cso's academia and come up with some modalities okay. where more women, 50% at the grassroots, mm. can also be involved right. in, in local government okay. activities Claire. in the next few months. Right. So in the next few months. The, that's, yes. that's the underlining. Yes. Uh, the, that, the, that's when the, the watch point. Okay. The, the, Gloria, final thoughts. I, I, I think that the political will must be to the, I wish the president would just announce this afternoon that he's passing the bill. Mm. He's signing. No, because we can Parliament this is But, but you want to sign today, 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 today. And then, because and even put in some we, form of proportional representation. Ghana cannot go to the UN in March 2020 for the Beijing plus 25 without passing this bill. Right. Because we have ratified the CEDAW in mm. 1995, uh, optional protocol 2000, and the constitution is getting to 30 years. So why are we, what are we waiting for? We need to pass it. Okay. And to add to that, the affirmative okay. action bill, that we read the closet, mm. doesn't only favor women in the, in the grassroots. Everywhere, trade union, the security services, mm. judicial, mm. education, everywhere. She so we need to pass government. And that will transform our country after five years. Okay, thank you very much. And you've been listening to my very vocal lady is well informed. Gloria Kankam is with Abantu for Development and uh, lawyer Gloria Ofori Boido is with Gimpa, thank you ladies for coming. Have a great time. And Mr. President, good morning. They want you to pass the law today. I don't know how you're going to use your, your magic wand to get it done, but, but they're talking about political will. And Mr. President, make your promises good. Well, this conversation is made possible by Star Ghana Foundation with funding from Danida, UK Aid, and the European Union. We'll see you after the break.